All right. Hi. Welcome. Fireside chat time. Got uh, myself right beside the fire here. Fireside chat. Got my uh, Psalm 46 mug here. The Lord is a present help in times of trouble. And um, just looking forward to sharing some uh, some thoughts that, that I hope are not only timely, but, but are encouraging. And that's the whole purpose of our our fireside chats. Uh, real quickly, <clears throat> just a couple, uh, three actually, uh, announcements for you. Tomorrow's fireside chat, uh, Pastor Jonathan Ferguson will be sharing uh, an encouraging word for you. Uh, and then Pastor Bill at the end of that will uh, be uh, doing communion with you. So just a heads up to be ready, maybe have some bread and juice ready for tomorrow's fireside chat. So that's number one. Number two <clears throat> is to remind you that we are doing all of our streaming, fireside chats, our midweek services, weekend services, in three formats. Uh, and not only just to, to give you a variety of ways to access these, but just in the event that one of them drops off, you've got the other two as a backup. So it's refugefamily.com, uh, Facebook Live, uh, and then, of course, the Refuge app. So note those three and, and be prepared, just as a lot of people are... Uh, on the information highway right now, which is good, using um, that for, um, for services such as, as this. And then lastly, before we jump in, prayer. Uh, we mentioned that last night uh, during our, our midweek uh, service, uh, during the announcements, that pastors are available to call the church and uh, they will pray with you. Um, and, and also our prayer chain. Our prayer chain is alive and well. And uh, you have a group of folks dedicated to prayer, prayer warriors, really, uh, that will pray for you. And you just email your prayer request to prayerwarriors at refugefamily.com. Prayerwarriors at refugefamily.com. And, um, uh, and that team of warriors, men and women warriors, uh, will be praying uh, for you. So I wanted to make sure you knew all that. So here we are. It's the 26th, our second week of Fireside Chats, and we have done uh, eight of these so far, and here's the ninth one. I was thinking uh, in, in preparing um, for this time with you about how, how Jesus would, would um, often use physical realities um, to describe spiritual ones, right? So uh, to describe spiritual thirst, he would talk about physical thirst and water, uh, and then the need for living water. And it's, it's a concept, like, oh yeah, I get that. Uh, he could relate how a shepherd in the fields with his sheep um, would be like the shepherd of our souls and, and how he was that and how he is that perfect shepherd. And in this, um, in this vein, in, in, this, in this method that Jesus would use, makes me think of, of, of physical strength and, and the similarities to spiritual strength. And like any analogy and any allegory, it breaks down at some point in time. So it, it, always good to remember that. Even a parable will do that. It's just an illustration. Uh, it's not exhaustive uh, on every point. Uh, people say, oh, what about this? Or what about that? But, but for the obvious points, it, it's very helpful. So physical strength, spiritual strength. You know, in physical strength, we, we do certain things, whether we, we walk or run, we exercise, maybe lift uh, some weights, wh whatever it is that, that, that you do to, to, to build up and maintain uh, physical strength, it's something that is ongoing, right? It's not a, a, a one and done. Well, you know, hey, 10 years ago, I, I did push-ups, you know, so <laughs> what's wrong? Um, it, it's, it's something that, that you continue on. And, and so in, in, in the spiritual strength, um, there, are, there are times when we really have a, a concentrated regimen, if you will, or, you know, they're really building up spiritual strength, maybe our faith and our, our trust. And so I started thinking about that um, early this morning and, and thinking about, you know, different points in my life, and I know you have them in your life too, where uh, trust was built, that, that, that spiritual faith muscle, I guess we'll call it, just for this illustration, uh, so I thought back to when I had left a, a, a part of a partnership that I was with, a business partnership. It was very successful, um, but the Lord really put in my heart just to go out on my own um, and thereby having more time, availability, freedom uh, to serve uh, the Lord. Uh, this is back when we were down at Calvary Chapel of Vista many years ago. Um, and then more time with my family because of the partnership I was in. It just required so much time uh, and, and traveling and such. And so I had to take that step of faith and just, just go for it and, and become self-employed. 
And, and that built muscle, spiritual muscle, faith muscle, um, for, for times of testing that, that come to people that are self-employed. And those of you that, that are or know people that are, you, you can certainly relate to that. And then that spiritual muscle, that, that faith muscle, that, um, the strength from that, uh, during that time of self-employment, uh, built up strength for the next time of testing, which was the call to go out into the mission field uh, and to move uh, my wife and my family um, to England. And so uh, the, the strength built up during that time of self-employment made that something easier to, to, to tackle um, and, and to move into. So we moved into England. And, and then the time there uh, as, as, as a missionary family and just trusting the Lord for uh, not only the fruit of the ministry, but provision to, to live in probably the most expensive place on earth, um, prepared us for the move back. Uh, and that was a step of faith. But the, 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 the spiritual muscles, if you will, the faith muscles were, were built up and, and ready for that. And so the, those different times and, and the different times of testing that, that you and I have uh, are important for our faith muscle, that spiritual muscle of faith. And in times of testing, um, help reveal how strong or not so strong that, that we are. So it, it's kind of like, a, in some ways, like a speed bump. Um, you know, you've heard, that, well, there's another, that's a physical example of a spiritual truth. Uh, speed bumps. We all know what they're like, whether they have them in your apartment complex or we have them in the, in the parking lot in the front of church, in front of refuge. Um, and, and we're all familiar with those. And it, perhaps you're familiar with them in, in, in a way that none of us like, but perhaps you have a, a container in your, your cup holder, in your console, without a lid on it. Um, and, and maybe you've done this once, hopefully just once, I've done it once. Uh, no lid on it, and you go over a bump and splashes out uh, whatever you may have in there. But the speed bump will reveal what, it, what you have in there. In my case, it was hot coffee, hot coffee. And so the speed bump revealed that, right? The speed bump um, helped me to discover what was, in, what was in that cup. So you could say for sure that the, the, the COVID-19 crisis is, is like a speed bump. And, and for me, it, it revealed what's currently in my faith cup, we'll call it, right? And uh, I, I was a little surprised that my, my faith was, was a little weak, um, it was just not, not what I would, would hope it would have been when this all kind of unfolded. And it wasn't so much about the sickness, but just the economics of all this and how it would affect our, our country and, and our economy and, and how that would affect all of us. And, and that, that really, I, I, that speed bump, that we're still on the speed bump, um, was a test really uh, of my faith. And I, I honestly, I didn't really like what I discovered came out of that, that cup. I, I, um, I thought I knew, um, but it wasn't what I, I really wanted it to be. And so this time, yeah, it's a, it's a crisis. Uh, it's, a, it's a major speed bump to our, our physiological health uh, and our economic health. Um, and, and it can reveal, it can reveal what's in that, that faith cup for you and, and, and as it did for me. And, and, and perhaps pointing out, perhaps helping uh, you to discover, as I discovered, not trusting in my father as much as, as, as I thought I did. But it's a teaching moment, right? Um, and it's a teaching moment from the best teacher ever, uh, who is the Lord, our Father in heaven. And so we learn from him. He teaches us in times like this. Um, it, it's not like he stops caring for us until we deal with that weakness or that area that he wants to teach us in. That, that's never the case. But he wants us to learn from those times, right? So he, he lets us discover something, and so we learn, we grow from it. So as I pondered that, I thought about a great passage in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews 11, verse 6, and thereafter. Uh, but in verse 6, it says, without faith, and it's talking about trusting in the Lord. Without trusting in the Lord, it's impossible to please him, which is interesting, right? Without, without faith, without trust, it, it's impossible to please him. And then it goes on to give examples of Noah and, and how he took those steps of faith and people were laughing. What are, you, what are you doing building this boat? You know, rain, what's rain? Uh, and, and then stories of Abraham and, and Sarah and, and all their different testings and, and such and how they learned to trust the Lord through those. It wasn't automatic, but they learned to trust the Lord more and more through those. And, and then it goes on to talk about Moses and, and, and others in that passage in, in Hebrews chapter 11. And, and please keep this in mind, because I, I, I don't want anyone to misunderstand. 
when we say, when, when the Bible says that without trusting him, it's impossible to please him, it, it's, not, it's not saying that he's not gonna love you. You're, you're not getting him to love you more by trusting him more. Uh, he can't love you any more than he already does. Uh, as Paul said in Romans chapter eight, if God loved us enough to send his son to die for us while we were sinners, how much more now that we're his kids? And so that's not gonna change. Uh, th- that is, and that, that's forever. But, but trusting him, it, it's, well, it, it'd be like this. Think of a, a, a child. Think of maybe yourself uh, when you first went down a big slide at, at the park or at, at the school playground. Uh, but you're with your parents because it's your first time going down, down the slide. And so you climb up this giant ladder for the slide, which may only be three feet, but to you it's, it's 30 feet. And, and so you climb up to that, a top of that, and, and then your dad or your mom are there at the bottom, way, way down there in the bottom, just a few feet away, but way, way down there in the bottom, and they're saying, come on, honey, you can do it. You got this. I'm here for you. Trust me, right? They say, trust me. I'm here for you, but we fear, no, no, you won't catch me. You, you, you'll move away right when I get to the bottom or whatever, and, and so um, when we find out that, that perhaps we're not trusting like we had hoped we would. Oh, I'm, I'm trusting. I'm, I'm strong in that area. Uh, what do you do with that? What do you do with what's revealed by that speed bump? And, and so some people worry, well, that, that's not the answer. Some will condemn themselves. Oh, I'm, I'm so weak in that area. And that, the Bible speaks strongly against self-condemnation. That's, that's, that's folly. Uh, we don't wallow in it either. Um, what we do is, is we go to the author and finisher of our faith, right? to the Lord, and we take that to him because he's faithful, and, and he's gracious, and, and he knows our frailty, uh, and he's the one, as Paul said in Philippians, is chapter 2, in fact, verse 13, Paul said in Philippians that it's God who works in us both to will and to do those things that please him. It's God that does it. He's working in us both to will those things and to do those things, and trusting him pleases him, and, and so God will work in, in our lives in those areas. So again, it's just like that dad at the, at the bottom of the slide. Um, so is our father uh, in, in heaven. Um, and he's not going to tell you to do something that he's not going to help you to do any more than that, that parent, that mom or dad at the bottom of the slide. They're not going to say, you can do it, go down the slide, and, and then knowing that we can't do it. Uh, they're not going to help us to do it. Um, they're there to help us do that, which they're telling us to do. Go down the slide. And so the same thing with the Lord. When, when he says, Things like in Joshua 1, 9, don't be afraid, be strong and courageous, don't, don't fear. And so many passages that you've been hearing over the last week and a half, um, the Lord's telling you to do that. He's telling me to do that. Alan, don't be afraid, don't fear, trust me, be strong and courageous. Well, if the Lord tells me to do that, he's gonna enable me to do that. And so God works in us both to will and to do those things that please him and trusting him pleases him so he'll do that and also he's going to remind you he's he's reminding me of the fact that he's never left us or forsaken us he promises to never do that in the future but think back in the past he's never done that and so he reminds us of those past uh times in our journey with him right he reminds us with his his word we've been hearing some great verses uh, Pastor Bill shared a lot of them last night and, and different verses you've heard from the, the different guys in fireside chats and just verses from the Bible, you know yourselves and you're seeing them elsewhere, you're hearing them, you're, you're being reminded of them and so the Lord does that uh, and using these chats as well. And so we do that, we, we keep pouring in the meal of the word. We talked about that last week, pouring in the meal of the word and just reinforcing that and the Lord uses that to build up that, that faith muscle, muscle um, uh, of just trusting in him, Right? Uh, and, and so he uses his word. He uses our experiences uh, that he's walked through with us. So I would just encourage you, if you find yourself periodically having those, those moments of, oh no, which is basically, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm fearful. We're not, we're not trusting him. Uh, we take that to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we say, Lord, a little bit of a struggle here. Uh, so just remind me, uh, I'm going to remind myself, like, like David, the Bible says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. We do that with the word of God. So let's just keep on doing that, and the Lord will build up that, uh, that faith muscle, that spiritual muscle. Amen? Let's pray. Mm. Father, you are so, so faithful, and you're so gracious, and you're so patient with us. Lord, I'm so thankful for that. I really am, and I know that's, that's who you are. That's the kind of parent you are to all of us, your kids, Lord. It's not like some of us 
um, deserve that and, and some of us get special favor. Lord, special favor for all your kids to help us grow in this area, to trust you, Lord, so that we have a healthy relationship with you regardless of what's going on, regardless of circumstances. So Lord, build that up in us and then use us to encourage others uh, as well. Uh, and Father, we pray that uh, as we do that, we can continue to, um, to allow you to redeem this mess that we're in, Lord, as you build up our relationship with you and our ministry to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for, uh, for joining us today. Bye-bye.